time has come for every child in the state of Washington to have access to on-site on -site instruction. Today, Governor Jay Inslee issuing an emergency proclamation to get Washington students back into the classroom. How he hopes this will help with struggling mental health. I'll go through whatever I can uh, personally to make sure that we we're coming back. After a year of being closed, Cottage Cafe will be serving up food soon. We'll tell you the changes you can expect to see once they open the doors. Uh, we'll take 50% for now, sure. And Washington moving into phase three, providing hope for the local hospitality industry, especially when it comes to hotels. We're hearing from one of the most historic hotels in our region, and for them, this isn't the first pandemic they've been faced with. Tracking some nice, mild weather for the weekend, which includes some sunshine. Details on that next. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crime 2 News at 6 o'clock. I'm Whitney Ward. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan broadcasting from home on this Friday night. Let's get straight to it. Another big announcement from Washington Governor Jay Inslee today. After weeks of saying he couldn't force school districts to return to in-person learning, he announced today that he plans to use his emergency powers to do just that starting next week. For weeks, the governor has said that decision was ultimately up to local school districts. However, the governor is growing frustrated with how slowly some districts in the state are doing so, even as evidence has shown transmission in schools is really low. At the same time, the governor said there is mounting evidence that keeping kids out of school is taking a big toll on students' mental health. I will be issuing an emergency proclamation that will give every K through 12 student that option for on-site instruction. One year after the state sent students home for what they thought would only be six weeks, Governor Inslee announced today he plans to use his emergency powers next week to require school districts to offer some in-person instruction for K through 12 students. A big reason why isolation is taking a toll. We're doing this because we have experienced a mental health crisis for many of our children and this will provide them an option uh, that suits their needs of their families. Dr. Nawandu Anyaku, the chief health equity officer at Swedish Hospital in Seattle said the impact is staggering, hitting underprivileged communities especially hard. Here at Swedish, we have seen an extraordinary increase in the number of our emergency department and inpatient admissions um, due to um, psychiatric and behavioral health issues, a lot of stress, suicidal ideation, just suicidal attempts, just heartbreaking numbers. In the, just the first two years of uh, two months of 2021, we're up 25% over last year. Um, and we just know that that's just the tip of the iceberg. Beyond the emotional toll, Superintendent of Public Instruction Chris Reichdahl says remote only instruction has led to an increase in absences, especially among middle and high schoolers, and a significant uptick in failing grades. In the form of engagement or, or student attendance, uh, we are unfortunately at every grade level seeing impacts, but especially middle school and high school. Reichdahl said right now about half of the state's elementary school students have some access to in-person learning. About 40% of middle schoolers and 30% of high schoolers have that same access. Under the governor's emergency proclamation, every district will be required to hold at least 30% of their weekly average of instructional hours as in-person on-campus instruction for all K-12 students. So for us locally, most of our local school districts are already meeting these guidelines or working toward meeting those guidelines. Some though are not. Seattle Public Schools, for example, they have not returned any in-person learning as of yet, so this will change things for them. In terms of a timeline for K through 6, April 5th is when this will need to be rolled out. For all other grades, K through 12, April 19th is the date. The governor also pointed out uh, that for students who would like to remain online only, they do have that option. Back to you. Well, now with Washington moving into phase three, significant changes are coming to the state's reopening plan. The main changes have to do with vaccines, 50% capacity for indoor spaces and sporting events. So let's break down these things and exactly what you need to know. Let's start with number one, the expansion of Washington vaccine eligibility on Wednesday, next Wednesday, March 17th, Washington will be moving to the next tier of eligibility. So everyone in tier two will become eligible to get a vaccine. That includes workers in agriculture, culture, food processing, grocery stores, public transit, 
firefighters, law enforcement, and that includes workers in corrections, jails and detention centers. It also includes anyone over the age of 16 who is pregnant or has any kind of disability that could put them at a higher risk. Number two, 50% capacity for indoor spaces. Phase three allows 400 people maximum for indoor and outdoor activities. That applies to restaurants, gyms, fitness centers, movie theaters, and a lot of other businesses. Restaurants can also offer alcohol service now until midnight. Three, sporting event changes. These are big. Some outdoor spectators finally are going to be allowed at sporting events in phase three. So outdoor events in facilities that have permanent seating, they can have up to 25% capacity for spectators. That means Seattle Mariners, for example, will be able to welcome fans back for the team's opening day, which is coming up here on April 1st. For the Spokane Indians, it means they will be able to have about 1,700 fans in attendance when their season opens on May 4th. The change also allows the same capacity for high school sports, rodeos, and other similar, similar outdoor spectator events. Well, if you are a fan of the Cottage Cafe in Spokane Valley, you are in luck. After a year of being shut down during the pandemic, the Cottage Cafe announced on Facebook they do plan to reopen on Phase 2, on Phase 3 rather. Krem 2's Amanda Rowley spoke with the owner and has more on when you might be able to get their iconics, iconic rather, Eggs Benedict again. The inside of the Cottage Cafe is a view that I have definitely missed. But now that Washington State is moving into phase three and expanding the capacity for restaurants to reopen, Cottage Cafe owners tell me it's ready to reopen. I told my crew that a year ago when we shut down, I'll go through whatever I can uh, personally to make sure that we we're coming back. Because I couldn't do, I don't know what else I would do. Cottage Cafe owner Drew Baker was determined to reopen his Spokane Valley restaurant when the time was right and safe for all. He considered offering to go, but he says eggs don't travel well, and that's not the experience he wanted for customers. Cottage has always been about coming in and dining in and not having people able to dine in just didn't sit well with me. For the most part, the owners and staff stayed pretty tight lipped on when it would reopen. In June, it posted an elusive photo of an omelet and hash browns on Facebook that said coming soon. But Friday morning, they broke silence and announced it would resume operations soon. Baker expects the Cottage Cafe will reopen for business in a couple weeks. Give us at least two weeks. Okay. Um, yeah, and by then we'll be 50% capacity. Uh, we just, we need a little time to spruce up the place and just get ready. We, we've all been, out, haven't done it in a year, so we need to maybe practice a little bit. <laughs> Some changes may include serving only the breakfast menu as staff get back into the swing of things. But Baker is looking forward to seeing the booths filled and have noise back in the Cottage Cafe. Keep tuned on uh, Facebook. We'll, yeah. we'll, let, we'll let everyone know when we're about to open. In Spokane Valley, Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. But just as things are starting to open up again, the Regional Health District is confirming the UK variant has been found in Spokane County. Scientists say this version of the coronavirus spreads more easily and more quickly than other variants, which may ultimately lead to more cases of COVID here locally. Interim Health Officer Dr. Frank Velasquez says it was only a matter of time before this happened, and it just means we can't give up wearing masks, social distancing, and getting people vaccinated. In a statement today, you, you can see here here, he said finding variants in our community doesn't change how we respond. It does reinforce the need for everyone in our community to be diligent in following those health measures. All right, let's send things outside. Why? Because we can and it's beautiful <laughs> outside. If you've been enjoying the weather this week, get ready for the weekend. It's going to be amazing. Tom Sherry is out there right now. How's it looking out there? It is looking fabulous and getting a little chilly now. You would expect that in March. Uh, sun is set and still have clear skies above us. A few clouds, just a few high clouds over on the uh, western horizon. But tomorrow we're looking for sunshine and warm temperatures, then partly cloudy on Sunday, but warmer 
corner, but we're not going to hit the 60. We're going to get close to it, but not quite at 60 that we talked about earlier. And then next week will be a cooler and windier, especially Monday uh, will be cooler, uh, cooler and windier as we've got uh, a bit of a system moving in. So 49 degrees, that's the current temperature here in the Spokane area, as you can see. Uh, and again, we're talking about seeing a weekend forecast of sunshine on Saturday, 56 the expected high. And then on Sunday, I thought you know, earlier this week we might get up to 60. Right now it looks like 59. But hey, that is still 10 degrees above average. I'll have a look at your 10 day forecast all coming up in a few minutes. Looking forward to that, Tom. Thank you very much. In the meantime, Spokane Public Schools wants to know what you think about building a new stadium in downtown Spokane instead of building it in place of Joe Alby Stadium. This week, the SPS board heard a proposal from the Downtown Spokane Partnership and the United Soccer League to build a new stadium near the Spokane Arena. The proposal claims it would save the school district $17.5 million and include plenty of free parking spaces. Proponents claim the central location would be convenient and provide more economic impact for the entire community. Voters, as you might recall, decided against a downtown sports stadium back in 2018. Well, now the school district wants to hear from you. Spokane Public Schools has posted an online survey on its website. It is also holding two public forums next week on March 16th and 17th, starting at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. You can register for those meetings on the district's website.